and we are live. Welcome, everybody. I want to welcome all of our guests who are attending today's inaugural kickoff of Midday Cafe. Please let your colleagues know, your friends know, um, and we look forward to all of you joining us. You can always find us at aka.ms slash HLS blog. So for today's kickoff uh, event, and I'm already flashing different screens there. Um, first, I want to welcome my colleagues and co-hosts on today's broadcast. We will have Samantha Brown, who's manning the moderated Q&A. We've got Mr. Mark Litwin, who's going to bring us news in too in just a bit, as well as upcoming events. And Pete Anello is going to be facilitating the man, Raj, and you'll get to meet them in a bit talking about Teams Voice. Then we'll have open Q&A. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get uh, started, though. We do have moderated Q&A chat open, so please post. Let us know who you are, where you're from. As you have questions and they come to mind, toss them out there. If you have comments, suggestions, we'll field everything that we can. Um, so please go ahead, do so there. And then as we get to them, you know, as we have chances to get to them, we'll go ahead and we'll recognize and uh, pull uh, those things out. I do want to call out, I did see we had a, a greetings from Brazil. We have so Philip from Switzerland. We have Joachim from Germany. So international audience, thank you for attending. And I know we have folks from all over here in the US. So we love seeing people from all over. And again, share with your colleagues. But with that, because this is a fast paced event or newscast, webcast. I'm gonna kick it over to Mr. Mark Litwin, who is going to bring us the news and live events or upcoming events. Take it away, Mark. And Mark, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Once again, Running all these buttons. with the um, news in two, Mr. Mark Litwin. Thanks. I did not expect an official voiceover, so we're already off to a great start. So I uh, have a couple you know, interesting news and uh, stories that came out in the last couple of weeks. So I thought they were interesting. And uh, you know, it's my two minutes, Mike said. So uh, hopefully you do as well. Um, First one I have up on the screen here is an uh, announcement came from from Dell. It was on the verge, and a couple other outlets picked it up. But I thought it was was super interesting that um, uh, Dell's coming out with a monitor. It has a, a bunch of interesting features that have been kind of a, a challenge since we've we've all moved to this work from home thing, and it it really solves the the problem when you know hey we're we're all at home now and we have you know now cameras and microphones and headsets and they kind of built all that into a, into a monitor and even put a little teams button on it uh it has windows hello just an amazing feature set that uh you know you wouldn't expect in a monitor and i, I think with ces coming out this week or their conference this week we're going to see a a few other you know things in, in this space that really help transition the you know the workforce into this kind of hybrid work from home you know, whatever we're calling it, environment. And, and this was the first one that came across last week. And, you know, again, I thought it was super interesting. It, uh, you know, definitely will will change how we're we're approaching devices and things. And this one, you know, is certified if, you know, for, for Microsoft Teams. Next one I had up the, um, this is from, uh, I believe, Tony Redmond's blog. Yeah, well, yeah, it says it on the screen there. Um, you know, channel meetings and teams have always been you know, a super neat feature, you know, you have all your work group together and, you know, collaborate with them, but uh, meeting scheduling is, has been a, a bit of a challenge. You know, there's always been questions, who gets the alert? How do I know it's scheduled? And how do I know what's in the, you know, the event or, you know, in the team? Uh, making some changes, it's on the, the roadmap officially at least released, or it's officially on the roadmap and being, yeah, I believe targeted for this month. Uh, and this is some screenshots of what it looks like where you can add a calendar into your Teams channel and then do all the scheduling and have a little bit more flexibility on how the, the notifications and the, you know, the alerts look on it. Um, so again, this is on the official Teams roadmap and uh, this is the first screenshots that have been uh, put out there on what that experience will, will look like. 
then finally, some some highlights from the uh, December uh, releases of Teams. This is the uh, uh, published every month in the tech community for uh, uh, for Teams. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. But uh, bottom one, I, I think, is the the most useful. And you see this in all of our you know meetings now. Kind of gives you a five minute reminder on when your meeting's about to end and another you know super user user friendly and and easy feature that really helps you know kind of that issue of you know we don't want our meetings to run over and need to be respectful of everyone's time this kind of helps guide you and you know make the the uh, right planning for for how your meetings end um middle one there you know the, the sharepoint app you know we continue to see how that integration between all of Office 365 gets better every every month, every week sometimes. And um, the, the SharePoint and List, all those apps were recently updated and give you a lot more flexibility in, in how all of that works together, where you can now start you know, cross-posting SharePoint libraries and uh, things within your, your Teams environment and tabs across the, the tops of the channels. Then finally, this is probably the, the most asked for feature. It, it started rolling out last month, the, uh, the, the uh, meeting join experience. It's you know always been friendly for, for those who have used Teams forever, but um, doing a lot more to guide the user on making some good decisions. You always know, see it'll prompt you if there's a lot of people in the meeting to, to mute it or whatever. It's been doing that for a while, but now I'll actually help you, you know, pick if you're in a room with somebody or uh, you, know, you want to join as a companion device, that sort of thing, and again, makes that all real user friendly to you in the screen there. Then finally, we have some upcoming events in the, uh, uh, these are all listed in the HLS blog, the links at the bottom there. Um, there was a nursing hackathon, Hack for Nursing, uh, last month. The results and how to get involved in that are uh, coming up January 21st, if you want to get involved there. Uh, some, some great content there. Um, this series, the Midday Cafe, uh, series. We're, we're off the next couple of weeks. Uh, uh, next week's a holiday, Martin Luther King Day, and then there's an uh, internal meeting. Um, but after that, great series coming up. Uh, we have the, the COVID uh, health bot, you know, some integrations there to help with scheduling and uh, the management of the, the vaccine rollout. Uh, Epic fire integration with teams, some great things you can do there for uh, your frontline, you know, clinical staff. A um, few in the SharePoint area, Bill Bear with uh, Microsoft Search on the 22nd of February, Dan Holm, uh, Yammer, some updates there. If you haven't checked out Yammer lately or your organization's disabled it, it's, you know, it doesn't look anything like it did a year ago. They've made some great updates and uh, really you know, honed in on the use cases there. And Dan's going to show us what, what they're doing there. Uh, Microsoft Lists on the 8th with uh, Mr. Cashman and uh, Teams Adoption and Governance to round out what we have scheduled. So, you know, please put any ideas or things you're looking for in the in the Q&A here. And uh, uh, with that, back to you, Mike. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. So that sounds great. Uh, be sure to check out those events. And as always, you can find them at our blog at aka.ms slash HLS blog. So now we are privileged uh to have some phenomenal guests so i'm going to go ahead to get it kicked off and transition it on over to mr pete anello and pete you want to hey. tee your your buddy yeah. up thanks mike <laughs> uh yeah super happy to have raj here today raj is one of my favorite people uh hands down but also at microsoft and really appreciate you taking the time out to spend with us today raj Kicking off Midday Cafe, I can't think of a, a better guest to have on our first webcast. So, you know, you have your slides up, you know, have at it whenever you're ready. Pete, thank you very much for the kind words. Much appreciated. The, the feeling is mutual. Uh, thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, thank you for joining this either live or if you're watching it via recording. We really appreciate uh, your time. I'm ready with my mug of coffee. I hope you are. It's uh, it's early morning cafe for me. Maybe it's midday cafe for you, uh, regardless of your time zone. Appreciate you all uh, joining today. Um, first things first, I hope everybody is doing safe, uh, keeping healthy um, as we maneuver through these um, crazy times. 
Um, based on uh, polling a uh, number of you, uh, we put together some interesting areas of discussion that I wanted to um, we wanted to share with you. And as always, feel free to use the, the chat capability to put your questions in and we'll get those answered. With that, let's um, get the ball rolling. Um, I want to start off with a huge thank you to our customer and partner community without whom we wouldn't be where we are as a product, as a service. Um, on top of uh, the tremendous adoption around chat, collaboration and meetings, two areas that have come up uh, as high areas of interest are Teams voice. Did you like my rotary dial phone there? And the second one is Teams from a platform capability perspective. For today's discussion, we'll focus on Teams voice capabilities. Platform capabilities are those um, like if you want to enable a physician to physician consult within your hospital system or you want to plan on how to distribute the vaccines effectively. Um, those are what we can enable through um, integrated solutions, custom solutions that are built on top of Teams platform. Will you have some really good, interesting uh, presentations and presenters coming up? Don't miss the next one on February 1st. Nikita and Gregory will do a great job of walking you through the COVID, COVID vaccination um, application that we've come together, uh, put together for you. All right, let's um, go into the content for today's discussion. As, as many of you may be aware of, Teams has uh, pretty rich voice capabilities built into it. And um, for those um, who are not familiar with the capabilities, we figured we'll give you a very, very quick level set on this. Um, there are two major components to uh, the voice solution built within uh, Microsoft Teams. One is the PBX or the call control functionality, right? That's the top half of the chart that you see. It's essentially giving you PBX capabilities in the cloud. Uh, and the second part is what you see on the bottom, which is the, the PSTN or the voice connectivity into your call control system. And we have a couple of options there uh, for you to consider. One is the native set of capabilities that Microsoft provides as a first party carrier. We call them calling plans. There are domestic calling plans and international calling plans, and it's available um, in many countries around the world um, where we essentially have to become a registered telecommunications provider to provide those ser uh, services in your country. The second option is what we call um, via direct routing in teams where many of you because of the heterogeneous nature of how voice deployments have come into being. Maybe you've merged with another company. Maybe you've acquired another company. The result is a lot of different PBX solutions are typically in place in, in uh, enterprise organizations like yourself. So chances are you probably already have a session management layer or a session border controller to aggregate all of those deployments um, into, into one place or a few different places. We can leverage your existing investments in both the SPC infrastructure that you may already have and also leverage your existing connections with telephony providers around the world so you have the best possible um, connectivity in different parts of the world that you operate from. So um, those are the two major ways that Microsoft Teams phone system can connect with telephony providers either in a native way or via direct routing using session border controllers. Uh, here's a quick uh, overview of the direct routing uh, architecture. I won't go into a lot of details in the short time that we have, but we can see where the session border controller and we have a certified list of providers that you know have gone through our, uh, our rigorous test plans and whatnot and works well with, uh, with the Microsoft phone system. You can choose one of those uh, many uh, certified um, session border controllers, connect your on-premises, PSDN provider with the Microsoft phone system and they provide a wide range of capabilities, uh, voice apps, um, support for analog devices, interoperability into third party PBX systems that you may already have. So a variety of capabilities that are provided uh, by the session border controllers, again tested and certified to work with the Microsoft uh, Teams phone system. Um, this is the piece of uh, presentation where we got a lot of feedback from when we uh, polled you, a number of you, and said what are the areas of interest you want to um, cover or talk about during these uh, presentations. And um, the overwhelming response was to know what's coming soon, right? 
what kind of new capabilities are coming to to the team's phone system or calling related capabilities. So in the next few minutes, let's um, take a quick walk through some of the top items that are coming up this half of the calendar year. Some may come sooner in the first quarter. Others may come in the second quarter, but generally in the first half of this calendar year. First one, multiple number dialing. Uh, many of you may may have experienced this or would want this for yourself where wherein your global address list within the organizational directory may have more than one number listed for a particular individual. Maybe their work number and their um, mobile number is listed, um, so you want to be able to choose which number you want to um, call this particular individual at. So multiple number dialing essentially allows you to do that uh, within the contact card options or the chat header for the particular user. You will see a listing of multiple numbers if they are available in the global address list for easy choice of which number you want to call this user at. Um, the second one we'll talk about is live captions for one on one calls, and this uh, is actually pretty handy now more than ever before because we are all working from home. There are shared workspaces. Sometimes you may be in a in a noisy environment. Like for example, my kids walk into my office room all the time and ask me a question about their math class and whatnot. So it's good to uh, have a way for uh, for you as a user to follow along what's being um, discussed in a call. You've probably seen this uh, in action in a meeting. If not, I would highly encourage you to do that. Um, otherwise, uh, we're basically bringing the same capability of live captions that you see in meetings into one on one calls. So you have a way for uh, following along. It also helps address a lot of accessibility requirements within large organizations um, to provide a way uh, to be inclusive and, and um, uh, help reach a broader audience. Uh, continuing uh, along, a call merge is also something we've heard from you as um, an important capability as a core uh, voice functionality that's available in um, in PBX systems today. Um, it's very self-explanatory if you're already on a call. Let's say Pete and I are talking and Mike calls me. Uh, I would want to merge the two calls together so we have a group call uh, as a result of that pretty straightforward capability and, and helps maneuver through a lot of those um, everyday calling scenarios. Let's then talk about uh, session border controller certification. There's a long list of SBC providers uh, and partners that we work closely with to give you the best possible direct routing um, experience with Teams phone system. The, the most recent one to, to be added to that list is uh, Ericsson. We've completed the certification process and they are now part of our certified list of SBC providers uh, for direct routing solutions. On the learn more uh, link here, you will find out more information about all of our partners who have been certified and tested uh, and allow us to provide this great experience to our customers. Last on this slide, we got some more to go, is being able to transfer calls, one on one calls between desktop and mobile. Again, it's a, it's one of the most popular capabilities from a meetings perspective, as we've heard from our user community. If you have not tried that, I, I encourage you to, to do that. Um, we are bringing the same capability to one on one calls too. Again, the, the work from home example is perfect for this. Uh, I may be away from my uh, desk, have, you know, begin to take a call on my mobile device and then I want to come in front of my um, computer or, to, or, or or my work desk and want to transfer that call without losing um, the, the connection. So this allows you to to transfer a call between devices. It's pretty slick. Um, uh, small things can go a long way in terms of productivity. This is one such capability. This is a big one. Um, a number of you um, in a hospital system, for example, or have remote sites that need to be survivable from a telephony perspective, have asked us to provide uh, survivable branch solutions where in the event of a, a WAN outage, those sites are still able to make and receive 
PSTN calls um, despite the, the lack of internet connection or, or a van outage, right? So uh, that's what survivable branch appliance does. Uh, if you're familiar with what we provided in the Skype for business world, this should be uh, very similar along those lines. A um, couple of screenshots here to give you a sense for what that um, looks like, um, where in the, again in the event of a, a network uh, issue or your van going down, we allow those branch sites to be able to make and receive PSTN calls. We are also giving um, the calling experience uh, a pretty major overall here based on your feedback um, where you will see a number of options like being able to play voicemails kind of in line in the in the history location here. Um, or expand on a given user, uh, provide their contact card so you know what are the other ways you can um, respond back to, to this call, along with um, you know the transcript of the last call and other uh, related collateral that go along with um, the calls, um, giving it a, a overall, like I said, from a UX UI perspective, so you have the right options available to you uh, in an easy in an easy man manner. I'm pretty excited about this one because uh, collaborative calling is is where we are taking a pretty traditional workload like voice and call queues, but putting it in the context of what teams can offer, right? Teams, as you all know, is is the hub for collaboration. It's where people come, teams come um, to to discuss, collaborate, work together and solve uh, problems. So this brings the best of both worlds together, right? Teams calling and teams collaborative capabilities in one place where you can set up a call queue. Maybe it's for your sales team or maybe it's a, it's a IT support a help desk solution within a, a business group. Uh, it's not a full blown call center. We have some pretty good solutions around that too, but this is more for a quick um, call queue like functionality that can then land within a channel and users within that channel can then service that call by picking up that call um, and pretty nifty way of uh, being able to handle some of those um, call queue like um, capabilities and requirements using a combination of teams calling and collaboration aspects within teams. Um, last but not least, we know teams uh, calling and phone system kind of go hand in hand with uh, devices and uh, IP phones um, because we don't have the time today to go into a lot of these details. Uh, we quickly put together a list of what's coming um, very soon from a team's phone and devices perspective. Um, here's a here's a short list for your uh, review. Some pretty cool uh, capabilities uh, coming here where we are transforming the notion of what IP phones could do, right? Yes, they're going to they're going to be great voice endpoints, but we also want to do more with with how these devices have innovated uh, in the in the many months and years, uh, uh, you know, taking a departure from traditional phones like these. Right, screen sharing on select audio phones, I think is pretty cool as a companion device. You can take a look at what's happening there on your IP phone uh, while following along on the voice conversation. With that, um, I want to say thank you to the Midday Cafe team uh, for uh, inviting me here. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, sharing this with you would love to answer some of the questions and I want to thank you all for the love on social media. I think it's been tremendous uh, in getting the word out there. Um, looking forward to, to coming back and talking to you um, on another topic. Mike, awesome. you, Raj. <laughs> Thanks so much, Raj. That was great and you have spurred a ton of questions. So, hey everybody, I'm Sam Brown. Uh, I'm here for the midday mailbag. So we have open Q&A and in case you didn't see it since this was our first inaugural midday cafe, we actually have a form so that for every upcoming midday cafe, you can submit questions beforehand. So if you're thinking about it and you wanna submit them and make sure we cover it during the presentation, 
feel free to do that. We'll post the forms link directly into this chat so that you have it. And we'll also post out when we do on social media for the upcoming ones as well. But thanks so much, Raj. So with that, we have a ton of questions for you, <laughs> um, which is awesome. And everybody in the audience, thanks for your questions and feel free to keep posting. Um, we, we have this time for you today. So with that, I think, the first question that we have is being able to easily see data around the call quality for users. So can we talk a little more about the administrative side of Teams calling? Fantastic question. Um, call quality diagnostics, dashboard, CQD as we call it, and call analytics are going to be your two primary interfaces and tools to be able to look inside what's happening from a call quality perspective. It's something that our um, larger meetings customers have put to use because meetings generate a much more higher volume of, of um, data around call quality, and we've been reusing the same infrastructure pretty effectively to also support um, calling capabilities to monitor voice quality within Teams. Um, Pete, uh, feel free to, to jump in if you have other suggestions. are the places to go, um, but only thing that I would add is we've also worked a great deal to bring the Power BI connector to call quality dashboard and have created really nice Power BI dashboards templates for our customers to use. So whether it's you know direct routing reports or you just want to have good insight into meeting usage right within your organization, um, the power of BI is now is now tapping into call quality dashboard. Pete, great call out on the Power BI templates. Um, there's a there's a, a lot of really good raw data that's available uh, as part of uh, some of the usage and analytics reports that we provide. And with some Power BI magic, you can get to exactly what you want. So nice call out there, Pete. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And this question we might have to follow up with our product team on, but um, everyone or it looks like Wapcom is asking which languages are supported initially with the one-to-one -one live captioning. We'll follow up with the exact list. Um, it's documented uh, in one of our support um, uh, articles, so we'll share that with you. Great, and so we will share all of this afterwards to the recording. I know there was a question at the end around um, if you can get these slides and the recording. So we'll share that all afterwards at aka.ms slash HLS blog. So you don't have to worry about writing any of this down. We'll have it for you. So next question, we'll follow up on that last one. Next question, do we have 911 support? We have uh, enhanced 911 support, both from a native calling plan perspective and also for uh, direct routing. Um, so the answer is yes. Awesome. And let's see. So anonymous question on calling plan. So they're asking about forwarding unassigned phone numbers. So example is forwarding a number for terminated users for six months without having to keep the user licensed. Are there any workarounds there? It's a good question. We'll have to um, look a little deeper into that unless Pete has some suggestions. I don't have any suggestions. I can't I can't think of a way to maintain a user license um, without I'm sorry, maintain a user number without the user license as well. Um, but yeah, we'll have to look into that one a little bit, I think. OK. Awesome. So again, we'll post afterwards too with a bunch of resources and everything that we're following up on. Uh, so we have another question around contacts with mobile and the desk phone number. So will it be possible to set up a standard phone number that's always used when you call the contact? At the moment, um, it, they're saying I can't really control which number is used. Um, any thoughts on that one, Raj? Yeah, a couple of thoughts. Um, I presume the question is around what caller ID gets exposed as you make some of those outbound calls. I'm reading a little bit into the question there. Mm -hmm. um, if that is the case, um, there are caller ID policies both on the 
Teams Admin Center for calling capabilities. Um, the SBCs also have options to manage caller IDs in a direct routing setup. Um, so you can um, in many ways decide what the outbound identity looks like for those calls. And it comes up when um, maybe it's a group of uh, physicians belonging to a, a particular location or pharmacists from a specific location want to make outbound calls. They want that facilities calls. Uh, phone number, excuse me, to be exposed as the outbound caller ID. So there are ways to to do that. Um, maybe there's more to this question and we can certainly follow up with, uh, with you on that. Great, OK, next one is will there be an integration between Teams and Dynamics 365? Um, we, we are certainly working <laughs> very closely with Dynamics 365. I do not have the, the deep details top of mind. I know there is an active work stream around that. Um, it's also something that we should um, follow up with this audience. OK, awesome. Last one, it looks like in the chat, which feel free to also add more questions. We're here for you. Um, Last one is in the Teams admin portal under analytics and reports, there's a new option called call, call diagnostics. What exactly is this? Pete, is this the same uh, option around CQD? No, it's a new it doesn't look like a it. new report. It's a new report within the, the, the web UI for the admin portal. Um, you know, so it I'm looking at it now. It's new. I honestly I don't know a lot about it, but it looks like, you know, deep packet inspection, limited UD, UDP, audio drivers, firewall issues. Um, so at first glance, it looks like, you know, out of the box canned reports that identify call dot call diagnostic issues that we see on a very common basis, like the most top reported issues like UDP, things like that. We'll find for some, uh, we'll look for some documentation around it and then share it with this group. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so yeah. I think there is one more question coming in on SIP phones. So when third party non-certified SIP phones will be able to register to Teams, um, Especially for it looks like inbound calling. Yeah, go ahead, Raj. Sorry. It's a great question. We do have that in our plans for for this half. More details um, coming out on that pretty soon. On what are the prerequisites for those phones? There are some TLS requirements um, that need to be met for third-party SIP phones to to connect into into Teams. Uh, look for some more information on that on that shortly. Awesome. All right, so with that, it looks like Mike already put our healthcare and life sciences blog up here, and that's where all the recording and resources will be later today. And um, with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. All right, Un there we go. Unmuting myself. I'm trying to send <laughs> myself over here live, um, and I want to share the last little slide here which is my screen too. So we'll go ahead and pop that up. There we go. I should be live here in a second, my face. Sorry, Samantha. Um, oh, you're so fine. just real quickly, like Sam was saying, I, I shared out the blog, uh, aka.ms slash HLS blog. I'm also going to put that in the announcement. Uh, as you will see, there is a post that went live today that's on the upcoming Midday Cafe schedule that Mark talked about earlier. We have a lot of great topics coming up. So please share this uh, with your colleagues. Let them know, your friends, your family. I see somebody else published something. Um, we love incoming caller ID. Well, we're gonna extend, it looks like, QA in just a second. Uh, but let me just quickly, well, actually, let me stop because that is QA. So somebody posted something in there quickly um, at the end, and the question was, I don't know, Sam, you want to read that? 
Yeah, so it looks like incoming caller ID. So they're seeing calls without displaying a caller ID compared to the Cisco environment. So if I understand this right, this is for calls coming into your team's users compared to, to the experience of what, what happens when incoming calls come into your Cisco environment. For a lot of the caller ID information um, that's inbound, we, we rely on the, the set of carriers because there's usually a tiered um, experience there. It's not just the one carrier, but could be multiple carriers involved as the call makes its way through uh, from the origin to, to the destination. Um, we rely on each of those providers to be able to carry forward the caller ID information so we can appropriately uh, display that when it comes to to our uh, service. So if there's something that's different from those two, um, we would need to look into kind of the information we are getting and what we are displaying to see if it's consistent or if there's any um, anything to, to troubleshoot there. Gotcha, okay, and we just had one clarification um, around the question with the mobile and desk phone number. So the clarification is they want to know if I can set up one of the two numbers as a standard number because teams should always use a standard number when they call the contact. Does yeah, the number clarify? that would be yeah. used. The number that would be used is the one that is uh, your your work number uh, because the mobile number is uh, is a different identity that is not on the team's phone system. So when you originate a call from teams, it will use your your work phone number as uh, configured in the team's admin center. OK, thanks so much, Raj. And I think that is it on the questions now. So back to you, Mike. All right. So thank you, Sam. So we're going to close it up. Um, we had talked about internally being done, even though we booked an hour, anywhere from you know 45 minutes, even less, because we want to make sure you have a chance to eat your lunch or breakfast, depending on your coast or your dinner. You know, we have people from all over. So we want to thank you all for joining us again. Make sure you take a look at the HLS blog at aka.ms slash HLS blog. I'll be taking the recording from today's session, all the resource links. We'll post that up there that you can, again, you can review, you can access the links, share them with your colleagues, your friends, your family, your children, your dogs, your cats, whatever the case might be. All are welcome as long as they bring coffee. And that's getting, there it is getting the coffee. So, you know, we want to welcome you. And again, this is a little rough. It's our first broadcast. We have two weeks to iterate and to do some reviews, but it'll be, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with our next session. And uh, we're really looking forward to that one. And Mark, what was that one coming up? The next one? Can you uh, unmute for a sec? He's looking up his, his slides. I had to look up the slides. It's uh, the COVID vaccine health bot. On oh, the health bot, COVID health bot. It's pretty timely. So join us, you know, even if you're not interested necessarily in the COVID piece, but you know people that want to leverage the bots within teams and other infrastructure, this is a great opportunity. And that you will find with all of our webcasts as we move forward. While we're healthcare and life sciences, we have a, a, a real laser focus on the things that enable not only healthcare and life sciences, but everybody to get their work done, whether it be developers, whether it be administrators, whether it be power users, we're here for you. And as Sam said, take a look at the mailbag. If you have requests for particular topics you'd like us to address and talk about, if you have suggestions to make this better, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to tee up a shout out ahead of time, even if you know you can't make it, but you want us to call you out on a broadcast, Drop it in the mailbag. And of course, any questions you have, and questions don't just have to be about the topic. You have here a team of Microsoft experts on any given day that are willing to talk to you about anything that has to do with getting your job done as best as we can. And so if you tee those questions up, if we don't have the answers, if we have the question beforehand, we can hunt that down. So with that, this is Mike, along with Sam Brown, with Pete Anello, Mark Litwin, 
and the man Raj. Bidding you have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. Take care. And as always, drink that coffee and ciao. Thanks.